Hello, and welcome to my second discussion. This discussion is on the research I have done um, for the topic of student activism in the 1960s. Uh, first, I want to say, according to course guidelines, historians must be honest and objective in their research and must be dedicated to a reasoned investigative reconstruction of primary sources. Um, now, with that being said, uh, the topic that I was focusing on last at my last discussion um, for the dissertation topic uh, was the student activism in the 1970s. Um, I covered a pretty broad spectrum of that time frame, including uh, the student activists, the um, civil rights movement. Um, so to further my research, I have kind of narrowed it down to um, the women and the night and the student activism, the women involved in the student activism. So for that, um, I did some research on the JSTOR um, database and I came up with three different um, articles speaking of diff kind of the same but also different areas of the women's involvement in the student activism. The first article I talked about was Elizabeth Cole, uh, Alyssa Zucker, and Joan Ostro's uh, Political Participation in feminist, feminist Consciousness Among Women Activists in the 1960s. This article was more of a data collected article. It talked about, um, you know, the not only the women involved in the student activism, but they also took a sample from the college, the University of Michigan, where they, um, the, just the general population of women, and they kind of wanted to compare it to how their activism was in uh, further later on in their midlives. Um, so the, the whole article talks about their involvement during the student activism, um, what they were involved with, how they were involved, and then also later on um, in their midlives, were they still politically involved in some of the student activism or, you know, or were they involved in political activism still in their midlives or did they kind of go back to the way the other group of women were, which was more quiet and sustained. Um, their article had a lot of um, data points, um, so their research was very well collected. They explained how they got the samples, what they went about, and how they did it. Um, so overall, the article definitely was a good aspect into how to do research um, if you are looking for sample sizes and discussions with those people involved during that time, basically primary sources. Um, the second article that I focused on was kind of in the same frame, a mind frame, but it was more of a storytelling than a data collection. Um, and this was by Rebecca Klatch, uh, The Formation of Feminist Consciousness Among Left and Right-Wing Activists of the 1960s. Uh, so this one talked really about um, the women involved in the Student uh, for Democratic Society, but also the Young American Foundation. So the left and the right, obviously, um, in the art as the article says, um, but it talks about how the women felt during this time. Were they even conscious at the time of their involvement of feminis feminism? Um, so that focus was, you know, pertained to that. A lot of the, the women in the SDS didn't feel like they were, you know, or they, they felt like they were not treated as equal. Um, they were still second class citizens. But the interesting thing is that the YAF actually, women mostly did feel like they were treated as equal and not as second class citizens. So it goes to show these people fighting for rights for, you know, African Americans and, you know, equality and stuff like that. They actually still weren't treating women as equal as they were trying to treat the African Americans they were fighting for. And these people were all involved in the same um, organizations. Uh, the last article that was discussed during for this um, topic was um, Bonnie Stepanoff's uh, Gender at the Barricades, Women in the Columbia University Uprising of the 1968. So I used Columbia and I used Michigan were the two main colleges they talked about in most of my articles. And this article really talked about um, the idea of women during the art or during the uprising, but how they still were not considered part of the organization. They weren't a face for the organization. They were in the background doing the mundane work of office work, making copies, answering phones, making phone calls. Uh, so in all these articles, it really speaks to the idea that women were still considered second class citizens in the late 1960s, early 70s during the uprising of the women's movement. Um, and so I feel like I've 
with doing all this research, I have narrowed my dissertation down um, to more of a specific topic in that area, and I want to further develop this idea of the women's involvement in the so in the uh, student activism. Thank you.